right now I'm at Mile End Station and I'm going to be walking to Stepney Green just along the Mile End Road, it's not too far but there's quite a lot to see along the way but uh, while we're here let's just admire the very oddness which is Mile End Station it's, it's a rather strange design I always think We're outside Mile End Station and ahead of us is the Mile End Road and that's our, our route to Stepney Green. And I think that's Bono sending us on the way left here. The route we'll take between the two tube stations is about to be marked on the map. And it's quite a straightforward route straight along the Mile End Road, or it seems to be, but I'm going to take a couple of diversions which are rather intriguing. I seem to put Stepney Green on the wrong side of the road, by the way, on this map. But I couldn't help myself taking a, a quick diversion to this Bob the Wentworth Arms. This is where the Green Bridge crosses the Mile End Road. The Green Bridge links two separate sections of parkland. I'm standing at the end of a road called Whitman Road. There's a fine pub across the road called the Cherry, which is quite tempting. But this is one of the last roads that was left in the area after complete demolition of most of the streets behind this point. You can see on this Google map the Green Bridge, which I've just marked. Now we'll merge into the current view all the streets that were lost, maybe the one of the largest demolitions in the whole of the London area post-war. and the powers that be replaced it with Mile End Park. To be fair, the area had been bombed in the Blitz. I think the first V1 in London dropped in the area. The walk from Mile End to Bethnal Green goes into this in a lot more detail. And we're back in the room. Well, back on the Mile End Road. And we're back at Queen Mary College, to be precise. But I don't know what all these are doing back at university. It's July. So I think this is a little diversion down Grand Walk, whatever that is. I wonder how grand this walk is. We're running alongside the Regent's Canal, which itself goes underneath Mile End Road. So we're walking south along the West Bank. Yeah, just worked that out, West Bank. But these are rather unusual, aren't they? These are sort of 1970s or 80s, or maybe 90s housing. Yeah, it really doesn't fit into the surrounding area at all, architecturally. So just opposite here is the heart of Queen Mary, eighteen ninety, I think that is. And Queen Mary integrated a whole lot of buildings and obliterated some churches and things when it became based here.
I've circled an area in red on this map which dates from around 1830 and we're going to explore this area in just a few minutes. While the Mile End Road was slightly built up in 1830, the hinterland was largely agricultural to the south and quite Jewish to the north. A large open space known as the Mile End Waste was being used for political and religious meetings, mainly by the Jewish population. And as you can see, even to the right of the red circled area, there's another Jewish cemetery. This area is all now covered by Queen Mary. The first Jewish burial ground on the Marlene Road and the oldest Jewish cemetery in Britain was established in 1657 with the permission of Oliver Cromwell. He had permitted Jews to return to England 267 years after Edward I expelled them. A little cul-de-sac called Marlen Place was built during the 1860s in the centre of three distinct Jewish cemeteries and the cemeteries were shielded from the road by high walls. As you can see the entrance to Mile End Place is quite hidden. It looks like a goods entrance to the back of the shop. So sorry about the noise. So we just turn this corner and the whole atmosphere is completely transformed. These were constructed as workers homes for the then nearby Charrington's brewery and some of these cottages are still reputedly occupied by former Charrington's pensioners. So behind the houses on the left there's a cemetery, behind the houses on the right there's also a cemetery. And this wall straight ahead with the, the ivy is also a cemetery. And I'm just going to see if I can uh, put the, my gimbal above the wall so you can have a look in. I'm not sure I'm tall enough mine. Nah, not really. This is Marlin Place viewed from above. So you can see the shops along Marlin Road and then this hidden enclave behind. So this is the top of Whitehorse Lane and to the right here stood the Lysette Chapel which was gutted by fire in 1894 and finally demolished in 1971. I think we need to look at some old maps. So this is the John Rock map from the middle of the 18th century and where the Lysette Chapel was going to go stood the Whitehorse Inn which I guess gave its name to the lane or maybe the other way around.
On this map, the southern end before he reaches Stepney Green was called Ocean Street. In the 1830s, though, the top has changed its name to George Street and Whitehorse Lane replaces Ocean Street. Go figure. So in the 1860s, the road is a little bit more defined. And halfway down, we reach Trafalgar Square. This was later called Trafalgar Gardens, just to stop the confusion, I guess. Please, please, Mr. Postman. I'm in the other Trafalgar Square. One in Stepney. And we're back to the modern day. And passing the Stepney Green Co-op, we uh, approach Stepney Green Station on the north side of the road. And our journey is at an end.